On January 27th of 1959, a group of Russian students set forth on a 16-day expedition into the frozen dark slopes of the Urals. Three days later, none of them were left alive. A rescue operation eventually discovered their bodies scattered around the peak of Holat Siakl, otherwise known as Dead Mountain in the local tongue of the Mainzi people. To this day, no one has been able to figure out who or what killed them. The Dyatlov Pass incident, named after the leader of the adventure, remains one of the most mysterious paranormal events in history. On one hand, we have a considerable amount of evidence to go on, but the evidence tends to raise more questions than it answers. Scientists and paranormal researchers have examined this incident time and time again, and they all come to the same conclusion, that it just doesn't make sense. So what actually happened on that night? in that icy arctic wasteland. Let's find out. These were all experienced mountaineers, aiming for their grade 3 certification, the highest possible certification level in the Soviet Union at the time. In order to reach this level, students had to cross almost 200 miles in extremely challenging terrain. Igor Dyatlov came up with the idea to head up into the Urals, aiming for the Latva River. Igor convinced nine of his fellow peers at the Ural Polytechnical Institute to join him, and the final group consisted of eight men and two women. They planned to make the crossing in the middle of winter, and the trip was considered to be an extremely challenging prospect. But since they were all experienced mountaineers, the local authorities approved it without much fuss. The group began their expedition two days after reaching Sverdlovsk Oblast by train. On January 27th of 1959, they set out towards the Dead Mountain. One day later, Yuri Yudin was forced to turn back due to an injury, becoming the only member of the expedition to escape with his life. The nine remaining hikers continued onward, traversing the icy slopes with skis. Over the next few days, they wrote sporadically in their journals. These journals were later recovered at the scene of the incident, and they provide us with a number of useful insights. On January 27th, Zina Komogorova wrote, Yura Yudin is leaving us today. His sciatic nerves inflamed again, and he is leaving. Such a pity. She later stated, Tonight we are going to be in a tent, apparently. Now we are in the 41st quarter. Today, our goal is to reach the 2nd Northern. On that same day, Layuda Dumanina wrote in her diary, Warm, skis are useless. Later continuing, Fortune smiles at us. The group also recorded a collective diary that day, in which they commented that the weather was looking good. Over the next few days, the students continued to write cheerful notes in their diaries, mostly talking about the warm weather and melting snow. On January 30th, the group encountered a serious drop in temperature, reaching down to negative 26 degrees Celsius that night. One diary mentions obscure, mysterious characters written in the trees, scrawled in the native Mainzi dialect. At this point, Layuda becomes withdrawn from the rest of the group, spending time alone while the others cook dinner and repair holes in the tent. The last journal entry was written on the 31st of January. This entry mentions that they have lost sight of the trail, commenting on how difficult it has become to walk through the snow. One hiker describes wind speeds as, like the draft from airplanes at takeoff. The group became exhausted at around 4 p.m. that day and started looking for a place to set up their tent. The last known journal entry mentions a nice warm dinner in the tent, shielded from the howling wind outside, hundreds of kilometers away from human settlements. That night, every single one of them died. The first bodies were discovered in February, and it took rescue teams until May to find the final deceased members of the expedition. First, they found the tent, badly damaged and half torn down. Items were scattered around, including the students' boots. But the strangest thing observed about the tent was that it had been slashed open from the inside. Whatever happened, the students were so afraid and distressed that they didn't even have time to exit through the main flap. 
Rescue teams found several footprints leading away from the tent, left by people walking barefoot or in socks. The footprints led down to the edge of a nearby forest, where investigators found the remains of a small fire. The first two bodies were discovered next to the fire. Krivonyshenk was found in his underwear, and the cause of death was determined to be hypothermia. Doroshenko was also found in a state of undress, and he too perished from hypothermia. A number of large tree branches were found broken nearby, some at heights of more than five meters. Three more bodies were quickly found, those of Dyatlov, Kolmogorova, and Slobodin. Again, the cause of death was determined to be hypothermia. The last four hikers were not discovered until investigators had searched the mountain for months. These final bodies were found buried under 13 feet of snow. Now this is where things become difficult to explain. Dubanina died from internal bleeding caused by severe chest trauma. Thibaut Brinol's cause of death was a traumatic skull fracture, and Zolotaryov was also killed by severe chest trauma. All of these deaths suggest that something capable of massive concussive force struck the hikers. Many researchers have commented that the bodies exhibited injuries quite similar to those found in car wrecks. Many of the hikers were found with missing eyeballs, tongues, and other body parts. Even stranger was the fact that some of the bodies tested positive for radiation upon discovery. These injuries have never been fully explained. The first question is why the hikers decided to leave the safety of their tent. It was warm and likely offered solid protection against the elements, even if it was partially damaged. A number of theories have been suggested. Many of the rescuers initially assumed that there was some kind of argument, but there was no sign of a physical struggle between the hikers. So why did the hikers leave their tent wearing virtually nothing? These were experienced mountaineers, so why didn't they act more rationally? What caused them to leave the tent? The Russian government officially reopened the investigation in 2019 and concluded that the deaths must have been caused by an avalanche or hurricane. But that doesn't really explain the concussive impacts to the bodies. Remember, the hikers looked like they had been hit by a semi-truck when they were discovered. Ultimately, the avalanche theory doesn't really hold up to scrutiny, especially if you consider that there was no evidence that an avalanche had ever taken place. Decades have passed since the Dyatlov incident, and not one person has witnessed an avalanche in the same area. So what other explanations remain? A separate group of hikers reported seeing strange lights in the sky near the dead mountain at the same time of the incident. They described the lights as orange spheres, and they were spotted numerous times in the area until 1959. Some believe that the Soviets were testing some kind of secret experimental weapon in the area, which would explain why they covered up the incident for three years after it occurred. One thing is certain. Army officials who arrived on the scene were acting somewhat strangely. A notepad was found in the hands of one dead hiker, but a Soviet colonel snatched up the notepad without showing anyone, claiming that it was nothing. When the last four bodies were about to be examined more closely, the Deputy Prosecutor General arrived from Moscow and shut the entire investigation down. It's clear that the hikers were running away from something that terrified them. Why else would they tear open their tent and run into the forest without stopping to put on their shoes and jackets? Whatever it was, the danger was more immediate than the inhospitable landscape. A rare phenomenon known as a catabatic wind may have caused them to run, and this is one of the theories that was suggested after the Russians reopened the investigation in 2019. Another theory based in science is the possibility of a Carmen Vortex Street, which is a rare weather event that can produce frequencies that cause massive psychological distress in humans. It could very well explain their irrational behavior. But some of the most compelling evidence involves military testing. We now know for a fact that the Soviets were testing parachute mines at the time in that area. These weapons detonate before they strike the ground, which might explain the concussive injuries. Some of the weapons may have also been radiological, which would explain why some of the bodies exhibited radioactivity, as well as orange skin and gray hair. Another theory suggests the deaths may have been caused by a photo flash bomb, dropped by a US plane 
as recent documents have revealed secret missions that took place in that area. In the end, none of these theories fully explain what happened to those nine hikers, and different theories are still discussed to this day on the Dyatlov Pass forum. But like so many other paranormal events, the Dyatlov incident will likely remain a mystery.